Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I want to talk, I want to continue talking about Vecna, Eve of Ruin, brand new Dungeons and Dragons canon hardback. Woo! Uh, and let's talk, let's continue talking in uh, full spoilers for Dungeons and Dragons, Vecna, Eve of Ruin, um, and uh, we're going to continue talking about chapter one. So at this point, the player characters have accepted um, their call, their questing from Lord ne uh, from Lord Dagult Neverember, the Lord of Neverwinter. They're in uh, they're in forgotten, and actually, they're starting to use the names really specifically. They're in Toral, so they're in the Forgotten Realms. They're in Toral, okay, and then they are specifically in Neverwinter. And Lord Never Ember, you know, sends them on this quest to go get these nobles back. They encounter Saracel, right? The human sorcerer who is connected to the Outer Plains. They encounter Umberto, who is the gnome historian. Oh, and by, oh, and it, and um, Saracel. And her secret is that she has seen, there might be some play here, but we're pretty sure she has seen Vecna, Vecna completing the ritual of remaking, re, uh, rewriting the entire multiverse to his design and making the world irredeemably evil and bent in every possible way to his advantage, right? So that, that, so she has seen this, right? And it's really disturbed her and it's terrified her, but she's also seen Vecna and she's seen him doing this ritual and there's a lot of value there and there's this and there's this secret okay so then we we come across umberto who is this gnome historian but what is he what is he what is his primary knowledge in vecna himself he knows that uh vecna's lieutenant Cass betrayed him and became a vampire right he knows there was a point where the two of them were living and actually talked about um the uh, and talked about grand plans together. Um, he knows about the sword of Cass, right? He knows that Cass, like, actually took um, Vecna and reduced him down to an eye and a hand. Uh, and by the way, we get this awesome new visual in chapter one of an eye being held by a hand. That's in a D and D canon hardback today. That's going to be on somebody's skin tomorrow. I guarantee you. I I very much. I, I wish I could get a Vegas line because I would take it on how on there at least being. I think there'll be twenty real IRL tattoos of you know Vecna's hand holding Vecna's eye, and and this was and it was done very stylistically within the book, right? And again, this all matters because this is D and D canon. And D&D &D canon is Magic the Gathering canon. And D&D &D and Magic the Gathering is writing new canon into Lord of the Rings. And um, and Dungeons and Dragons canon is Lego canon now, right? And connected to Lego worlds. And D&D &D is connected to Magic the Gathering worlds. It's profound. like, And everything that, that appears in these Lego, in these Dungeons and Dragons canon hardbacks matters, right? It's pretty powerful. So... Uh, so chapter one, uh, oh, and then Indrani is this very, like, think about Indrani's like Julia Roberts of our world, right? She's this very wealthy actress, and she knows that Lord, Dag Lord Dagalt Neverember does not have a clear claim to Lord to being Lord, right? That's a huge secret, right? Now, at this point, finally, the, the player characters reach the, the final point, right? And they get to Elden Keyward. Now, Elden Keyward is an elven priest, okay? And he um, he worships. I think the name is Deirin, and Deirin is a god of writing and knowledge, right? So, and he is lawful good, right? So, uh, and so finally, the player characters are deep in this Neverwinter, the never-ending um, um, cemetery. Okay, and there, and they have found that Vecna, that there is a cult of Vecna, that is all up in this Neverwinter cemetery, 
and they are now aware that these cult, uh, these cultists of Vecna, are capturing these nobles. That they have been they have been kidnapping these nobles, and then they have been setting them into these hour long rituals. Now these take hours long because uh, these cultists of Vecna, we don't even know if they've ever even con con contacted Vecna, right? They are, cre they're gonna, they're doing these rituals, which will take the knowledge, but mostly the powerful secrets of these nobles, that will take the powerful nobles, uh, secrets of these nobles, and transfer them to Vecna. And at this point, right, the player characters figure this out, and in simply, and, and, and they get a link to Vecna, right? Now the link to Vecna is they understand that powerful secrets can be given to the multiverse in different ways, right? So at this point, they get the power of secrets. The whole player character party gets the power of secrets. Now what is the power of secrets? The power of secrets is that you can take, you can get, you can gain a powerful secret that others don't know. You can tell other non-player characters and get what you normally get out of secrets, even today. And, and I think this is really fascinating because why is Dungeons and Dragons talking about the power of secrets? Well, the most valuable thing today is data. It's worth more than gold. It's worth it's worth more than oil. Data is the most powerful force on the planet now, right? It's incredible, right? And so I think it's in a little bit of an an analog to our world, right? So these powerful secrets. If you give it to another non-player character, it just functions like a regular secret. Maybe you'll get an advantage, maybe that person will owe you something, maybe you'll be able to make a move in the world, right? But the power of secrets, this mechanical benefit, is that if you tell no one, if, if your group says, uh, we're gonna use the power of secrets, then you can take these powerful secrets and you can do what, what, what Vecna is doing is not evil. He is simply using magic, right? And the multiverse, the multiverse values secrets. So you can whisper this secret to the multiverse. You could say, I'm giving this secret to the world. I'm whispering it to the multiverse. And when that happens, you and your entire party, all of your allies receive advantage on all D20 rolls, on all D20 rolls for one minute. Now, frankly, in my humble opinion, at my table, that means one scene, right? You know, 10 rounds. Have you ever seen, I don't, in my humble opinion, no good dungeon master allows any combat to go beyond three rounds, right? Like you wanna keep the game moving, right? You wanna keep the session moving. You wanna keep the narrative moving. If you wanna keep the campaign moving, three rounds, wrap it, let's go, right? So the reality is you're gonna get advantage on every D20 roll for an entire scene. That's powerful. That is incredibly powerful. Or 10 rounds. It's highly unlikely any of your, um, any of your, actually, if you have combats going longer than 10 rounds, you probably don't have a very good dungeon master. Just my take there. All right, so the power of secrets. Finally, the player characters get to Dagult Never Ember, right? And this is really fascinating. So they re, oh, I'm sorry, they get to Elden Keyword, Ward, Elden Keyword. He is an elf priest who worships the god of writing and knowledge, right? And he is in a coffin and the cultists are doing this ritual on him and he is very close to having, having his powerful secret stolen, right? So at this point, the player characters come across Kendry, this evil wizard, okay? And they and that this evil wizard is being assisted by five Nothics. Let's talk about Nothics. What the heck is a Nothic, right? Very fascinating. Listen to this. So Vecna is a god. What was he before? He was he was simply a wizard, right? He was a living being. I think he was a human. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, and he was a living being and he is, and he has used arcane power to literally make himself a God. And he is worshiped on multi, all over the multi years. He has, Vecna has worshipers on every known realm space, right? And those realm spaces exist on the astral plane and, uh, they exist amongst astral systems, right? And uh, I'm sorry, they, they, they exist. So 
these realm spaces, right? So, for instance, Kryn, Dragonlance, is a realm space that exists within the astral plane. On that astral plane, there is an astral sea. On that astral sea, there are many wild space systems. And one and inner, and you could just switch out, right? If it's a known realm space, that's a realm space. It's the same thing as a wild space system. It's a realm space system, okay? Um, and so, and Vecna has worshipers on probably every known realm space, right? Extremely powerful, right? Now, he became, he used dark magic, right? Now, if you ever watched, uh, by the way, I highly recommend this show. It's called uh, Renegade Nell, right? There's literally the story of a woman who's just, you know, she's just like a noble, and then she decides to become an evil wizard, right? Well, that's that's a dangerous path, right? Vecta made it to the top of that path. But even at that, he's a lich, right? He had to li he literally had to give up his life, right? But now he's a powerful lich. Well, guess what? It don't always work out. In fact, that's what a Nothic is. A Nothic is somebody who went, is a wizard. It could be a tiefling wizard. It could be a gnome wizard. It could be a um, human wizard, right? But they, they go on this journey to become a super powerful evil wizard, right? We are dealing with incredibly dangerous fortune, forces. And Nothics are people who the, um, uh, the, the power has taken their independence, right? And Nothics can't even remember what they were. But they, the, all of them are, are wizards who went on the dark journey that Vecna attempted and failed. And now they're Nothics. And now they now they're just like kind of creatures who can be picked up and um, and used by 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 dark wizards who have not failed yet and are either going to be anothic or are going to be Vecna or something like Vecna, right? And some of these you know some of these guys and late some of these ladies and you know and men they've been trying for a hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years, right? And then they turn anothic or they reach the top, right? That is fascinating. That is a beautiful image of a fascinating monster in Dungeons and Dragons. So these Nothics are extremely uh, dangerous, right? And they use arcane power. They use these talents they have. They have only their, you know, their face has converged into this one evil eye, right? So the player characters finally get to this uh, this space where um, they are uh, ready to deal, uh, ready to. They come across the, the 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 you know the evil wizard who's doing the ritual, and they attempt to stop that wizard. They are able if they're able to stop the wizard right and defeat the Nothics, the ritual's disrupted, and this immediately crashes them into Evernight. Right, they they fall out of Toral. They fall out of the Forgotten Realms, and they fall into the Shadowfell into an analog dark space. Evernight is an evil, dark, shrouded version of Neverwinter, right? And so now, by disrupting the the ritual, they've fallen into this, right? Really fascinating. Man, oh man, am I loving the read on uh, Vecna, Eve of Ruin, and I wanna thank you very much for letting me share it with you. Uh, it's really a blessing. I am celebrating the arrival of a brand new Dungeons & Dragons canon hardback. And I wanted to say, and I, I, I'm really happy to be sharing it with you. Uh, what are your thoughts? Have you gotten this far in the book? Where are you at in the book? What's your thoughts on um, Vecna, uh, Vecna, Eve of Ruin? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a fetch millennium.